Should prison officials bear responsibility for the safety of inmates? It's an unsettling question, one that takes us to the heart of a chilling case. Picture this. Dual vocational institution, California State Prison, where the lives of two inmates, Jonathan Guy Alexander and John Lydon, are about to take a fateful turn. It's a tale of negligence, of decisions made in haste, and of a life lost far too soon. So buckle up as we delve into the sequence of events that led to this tragic incident. It all began with a decision, a decision made by Captain Jared Lozano. A decision that would irrevocably change the lives of two men and put a dark stain on the reputation of Tracy's dual vocational institution, a California state prison. Captain Jared Lozano, a man entrusted with the lives of those within the prison walls, made a decision that reeked of negligence and improper application of policy and procedure. He chose to house John Lydon, a high-risk inmate, with Jonathan Guy Alexander, a man convicted of child molestation. This was more than just a mere oversight. It was a shocking dereliction of duty that would lead to a tragic and avoidable loss of life. Lydon, a man who had been deeply scarred by a similar crime in his childhood, had explicitly stated that he could bear to be housed with anyone except child molesters. Yet Captain Lozano, dismissing Lydon's plea, told him he would do what he wanted because it was his prison. This was not just an abuse of power, it was a cruel disregard for an inmate's traumatic past and a blatant dismissal of his legitimate concerns. Unfortunately, Captain Lozano's negligence didn't end there. According to an internal memo, he had been telling inmates that due to the high cost of prison beds, the administration was forced to double house inmates whenever possible. The captain's focus was not on inmate safety, but on cost-cutting measures. A clear indication of his misplaced priorities. What's more, when pressed for details about his conversation with Leiden, Captain Lozano claimed he couldn't remember the specifics. A convenient lapse of memory, perhaps, or a deliberate attempt to evade responsibility. Regardless, the facts remain unaltered. Captain Lozano's decision to pair Leiden with Alexander was a flagrant violation of proper procedure. The consequences of this decision were dire. A man lost his life. A prison was stained with unnecessary violence. And the person responsible for this tragedy was promoted rather than held accountable. A chilling testament to the lack of justice within the system. A decision that would have grave consequences Consequences that would forever taint the legacy of Captain Jared Lozano and leave a lasting scar on the conscience of those who value justice and human life. In the confines of their cell, a heinous crime was committed. This was a chilling space, the final resting place of Jonathan Guy Alexander. Dual Lieutenant Henry Johnson III, with a sense of dread, opened the cell door. He stepped into a scene that would haunt him. Alexander lay cold and lifeless beneath the bottom bunk his hands tied behind his back, strangled with a noose. The grim sight painted a picture of a man's life brutally cut short. Now let's step back and look at the moment that followed the discovery. John Lydon, the cellmate and the prime suspect, did not run or hide. Instead, he confessed to the crime almost immediately, a confession that would typically close a case, but this one, it only opened a can of worms. Lydon's defense attorney, in a surprising twist, tried to shift the blame not on another inmate or a mysterious third party, but on the very people who were supposed to maintain order and safety within the prison walls, the staff. They were accused of placing a high-risk inmate, Leiden, in a cell with a convicted child molester, Alexander. This wasn't a mere allegation. Leiden had made it clear to the jailers that he could stand to be housed with an inmate of any race, but not with child molesters. His traumatic past, where he was molested by a priest as a boy, was a known fact. Yet, he was deliberately placed in a situation that triggered his worst memories and provoked his most violent instincts. The man behind this decision? Captain Jared Lozano. During his testimony, Lozano provided little information, conveniently forgetting the specifics of his conversation with Leiden. Yet, according to a memo by a dual investigator, Lozano had admitted to double housing inmates whenever possible due to the high cost of prison beds. A life was lost, but who was truly at fault? Was it Leiden, the inmate who committed the crime, or was it Lozano, the captain who knowingly created a volatile situation? 
As the scene closes on the tragic outcome of a preventable crime, the question of accountability looms large. As the dust settled, unanswered questions began to arise. We're left to ponder on the disquieting silence from Captain Jared Lozano. When questioned about the specifics of his conversation with Leiden, he offered a vague response. I don't remember the specifics of my conversation with Mr. Leiden. An unsettling evasion, a dismissive wave of the hand, as if the life of an inmate and the circumstances leading to his tragic death were too trivial to recall. Then there's the memo, a testament to Lozano's disregard for human life. The document given to a Doyle investigator by Mendoza, another officer, unfolds a chilling narrative. Lozano, it seems, was more concerned about the high cost of prison beds than the safety of the inmates in his charge. His solution? Double house inmates, irrespective of the potential danger such a decision could pose. The memo further reveals Lozano's audaciousness. In his own words, he would tell inmates, sometimes I would hear the captain make these statements to the inmates. And then he ordered the transfer of Leiden out of single cell housing directly into the cell of Jonathan Guy Alexander. But these revelations are chillingly devoid of remorse, empathy, or even a hint of regret for the fatal decision that led to Alexander's death. Instead, we see a man seemingly more concerned with budgeting and his own ambitions than the lives of those he was entrusted to protect. And yet, despite the confession from Leiden, the damning memo, and the tragic outcome of his decisions, Lozano continues to ascend the ranks, unperturbed and unaccountable for his actions. But these explanations only raise more questions. Justice demands accountability. A sentence that reverberates with the magnitude of its implications. It's a call that echoes through the grim corridors of Doyle Vocational Institution, a call that seeks to address the grievous error in judgment made by one man, Jared Lozano. Lozano, once a captain, now strides the halls of the same institution as Deputy Director, Facility Support Division of Adult Institutions. A promotion that came not in spite of his negligence, but seemingly without any consideration of it. This is a glaring instance of a system that promotes upward, without taking into account the weight of one's actions and their consequences. In the case of Jonathan Guy Alexander, the cost of neglect was his life. The responsibility of a prison official extends beyond just maintaining order. It includes ensuring the safety of those within their charge, a duty Lozano failed to uphold. In the aftermath of this tragedy, we must ask ourselves, how can we ensure that such negligence does not happen again? The answer lies in holding those in power accountable for their actions. To turn a blind eye to this grave misconduct is to foster an environment where the value of human life is diminished. The call for accountability is not just about seeking justice for Jonathan Guy Alexander, it is about demanding a change in a system that allowed such a tragedy to occur. It is a call for the recognition of the inherent dignity and worth of every individual, even those serving time in our prisons. As we stand at the precipice of this grave injustice, we must remember that accountability is not just about punishment, it's about creating a culture of responsibility, a culture where every decision is made with the awareness of its potential consequences. It's time to demand accountability for Jared Lozano's actions. Because without accountability there is no justice, and without justice there can be no peace.